Hey guys, Tom with Permaculture Wilmington here. I'm very excited to bring you this video because I feel over the past couple weeks I have evolved so much in my understanding of what's going on. Today I went out and I've got persimmon trees which are a native fruit tree and when we move into our new location we're going to be making a native food forest and what that means is that we have all the microbes from the forest around us that have evolved to grow in this climate in our soil to help us grow the plants. So, because we know for a fact that plants are actually sending out these sugars into the soil in order to call the microbes to them that can give them what they need in order to get the nutrition from the organic material in the top six to eight inches. So what we're doing today is kind of um, taking the seeds from the, the forest that we've got under the persimmon tree and we're, we're, putting in, um, we're putting them in this pot until we can get to our new location. But we need to, to make a, a situation that resembles the same soil they came from um, with the same biology. So how do we do that is the question. And what we're going to do right now is I'm taking compost that I've already had. It's already well composted. It's already cooled down well past the temperatures that it needs to be. And it's been sitting for about three weeks. I'm going to take this and use this as a subsoil in the bottom because it's bacteria dominated. And these plants, need, or the, the trees that we're planting, they need fungal dominated soil because they come from a forest. So they need the mycelium that has been growing over years and years in the soil. You know, and has evolved around the tree and the trees called them in. And the, these microbes have actually grown symbiotically with the tree, but we need to, to um, mimic that soil. So I've got some, some balls that I've, I've brought back. Um, so these are native soil balls that I got from the forest underneath the tree. So they have the microbes in them. And just these balls alone, one inch of soil has an amazing amount, like 600 million microbes in it. So just these balls alone will be enough to inoculate this whole thing, no problem. Um, but first we need to put the subsoil down that I'm talking about which is the bacteria dominated soil. So this is the, the mulch that we're gonna be putting on top to resemble the forest floor mulch, the leaf debris that falls. So we're gonna set that to the side and we're just gonna dump in this bacteria dominated thermophilic compost that we created. And look at there, there's a nice worm. Man, that's a monster. Look, at he's gone, I'm gonna leave him alone. But he's coming out the other side over here. But I'm just going to keep him where he's at and keep that, that um, aggregate formed because that's, that's what these are. They're micro, or macro and micro aggregates and um, over time, you know, the, the bacteria form these little balls but then the mycelium come in and they take the balls that the bacteria form and they also pull those balls together and make bigger balls. So macro aggregates because we, we can actually see them with our naked eye. So I'm um, putting in just a handful or two more of this just to create a subsoil so those tap roots that form can actually go down a little bit and hopefully I'll get them before they start getting to the bottom and curling and we can plant them out in our new food forest um, because we don't want them to start forming a ball or they'll constrict on themselves and they'll keep themselves from growing healthy and growing big and abundant. That taproot is supposed to be able to stabilize the tree as it gets taller. So, um, and not all trees have tap roots, only a very few percentage of them do, but this happens to be one of them and I've seen that. So in, in person, I've actually broke off the tree off the top of the soil and uh, I've had a tree grow from the taproot that was like a foot down in the soil. So, I mean, it's amazing what those, these trees can do and how resilient they are. Um, but I'm gonna put these, these balls that I brought back, which is the topsoil, just a handful, that has the microbiology. Um, I'm gonna put that above. So I'm actually gonna mix it in. So um, fungal dominated soil is what you get in a forest. So I grow mushrooms and I actually have fungal dominated uh, sawdust that is spent. So it's already grown all the mushrooms, the mycelium has receded. Um, so it may not be fungal dominated at the moment. This one is. This one actually has the fungus growing on it. This is a, um, that's a Concord Farms mushroom. It's a company in California that grows mushrooms and we don't know exactly what species. We know it's Pleurotus, but uh, it's an oyster mushroom. But we don't know exactly what kind because we just got it from the store and cultured it. Um, and I started growing them because they were awesome. They taste wonderful. But we're going to take this fungal dominated soil and layer it with the soil that we got from the forest. So real quick guys, it's getting dark, so I'm going to talk fast and move quick. Go ahead and get that in there. Create that forest floor situation. Some nice high carbon material there. Lots of nutrition, lots of, of acids, the enzymes from those mushrooms that have grown in there. Humic acid, uh, small amino carbon chains. Um, let's see here, let's do, so we got that down there, so next we need the balls. So I'm going to take the microorganism balls here, the inoculant, 
and I'm gonna sprinkle it around make sure those get in there good and then I'm gonna take this active culture very active culture that's I mean it's fruiting so it's it's definitely active um, but I'm gonna break that up actually and just rip it in there get it around because this will grow this is is actual um, cells from the organism that are still alive so it, it is actual um, inoculation material that we can use to inoculate a lot of things if you want to uh, straw and, and gardens and all you know anything wood these are saprophytic so they like uh, dead wood but get all that in there all that mycelium out okay and I want to I want to break this up but I don't want to break it up too much I want to make sure that I leave some of the clumps together because the, the mycelium is in the clumps. It's doing what they do in fields when they till the soil. So we don't want to break it up into small, small particles. We, wish, we want to leave clumps in there. So that's what we're doing here. All right, and just like the way it was on the forest floor, I'm going to take our seeds and I'm just going to sprinkle them out just like they fell from the tree, okay? And I'm gonna spread them around. There's a lot of seeds in here. Um, but this way we don't have to actually get the seeds out of the shells. We can leave them in and um, these will sprout. And yes, there will be a lot of sprouts in here and there will be a lot of trees. Like if I were to purchase this, once all these have sprouted, if I purchased all these sprouts at $10 or say $5 a piece at small sprouts, $10 for little bigger ones, this is money. This is something that we can actually profit from if, if other people were interested in creating these food for us with native plants. So, you know, this is something that I might be interested in in the future. I'm not sure where, where life is taking me, but I'm excited about it, guys. This is wonderful. So, um, now that we've got uh, our seeds down, I'm going to just put the, the straw on top, just like it was in the forest. There was leaf debris um, just barely covering. Actually, a lot of the seeds were falling through the leaf debris that was on top. I'm guessing from where the, uh, the fruit fell on top and then decomposed and the seeds fell down through the debris or even if an animal was uh, sitting in the tree like a squirrel or a raccoon or a possum or something and you know it was eating the seed and eating the, the, um, the actual sweet part off of the seed and leaving the dropping the seeds themselves you know that could be a reason why I was finding such beautiful seeds on the top layer of the debris. So here we go guys that's all we're doing today. Just putting that right on top just like that and hold on just a second because I did I found one that was already sprouted so you can see what it looks like but this was just sitting right on top of the debris and it already had the sprout in it and this is going to form a tree if I can get it out without breaking and there it is so what you guys if you want to see this is the taproot I was talking about that comes out of these and again, not all trees have tap roots, but this, this particular uh, type of tree, a persimmon, this is an American persimmon, which is an astringent tree, um, so what uh, the astringent fruit. So we, you know, when it falls, it's very bitter until it um, ripens to the point. So it usually falls on the ground and then we pick them up and we put them on our counter and they're still astringent. So you gotta wait a couple weeks until they get real soft, almost like, you know, they're decomposing at that point um, because they've gotten so ripe, but that's when they're the best and that's when we can actually eat them. So that's what that looks like, guys. And I'm gonna just put this right in the soil. And I'm not even gonna really do much. I'm just gonna turn it right upside down and let it grow in itself. Maybe make a little divot because I don't wanna disturb or, or hurt that root. And that's, that's what we're gonna do if we try to play too much of a role in its life. I wanna get it so that the seed's up at least. There we go. Just like that. Cover it with straw. And bada bing. Um, and the most important thing is to not water with chlorinated water. So I'm going to actually, uh, we've got rainwater in a barrel, but the best thing to use is native water, believe it or not. So you need an active ecosystem to pull water from, and that has all the microbes, the beneficial microbes in the water itself from that living ecosystem to help our life because we need life to get life. Guys, this is Tom, Permaculture Wilmington. I hope you're having a great day. Check us out on Facebook, NorthCarolinaPermaculture.com.